Hello friends, welcome to this series of tutorials on Java Swings. In this tutorial, we'll be basi basically going through all the basics of Java Swings, including the UI controls, and we'll be discussing sample examples on all those UI controls. And this tutorial requires a prerequisite that you should have some basic knowledge of Core Java. So moving on. So what is Java Swing? So Java basically provides a rich set of libraries to create graphical user interface in platform independent way. So I guess you all know what is a graphical user interface or a GUI. So your windows is like a GUI and graphical user interface basically on a very basic level, it will basically provides you a UI interface wherein Let's take an example of a form and on that form you have to fill your first name, you have to give your last name and so on. So this is basically interface which is provided to you to enter your details. So this is basically user interface and if you have done some programs on core Java, you know, to take the inputs, we can use scanners. We can take use of readers and we can just fed the inputs via console. So instead of that, we can just lay out a user interface with the help of which user can just give in the input details and we can process these details. So we basically provides a GUI to that user instead of entering the values to the console, we just create a UI. So this is basically a graphical user interface and Java Sphinx as it is written here, they provide a rich set of libraries to create user interface. We discuss what a user interface is in platform independent way. So we all know that one of the advantages of Java is that Java is platform independent. So as Sphinx are written in Java language, so automatically they will also be platform independent. Uh, by for the some users who don't know this, so I'll just tell you, suppose you have written some kind of utility and we have various type of operating systems. We have Windows, we have Linux, we have Mac OS X. So the advantage of Java is that Java is platform independent. So it means it does not depend on the basic or the base platform, whether be it Windows, be it Linux, be it Mac, it will get executed on all the platforms. So Java Sphinx also inherit its platform independency from Java language. So in this way, this provides a mechanism with which we can code platform independent examples or platform independent UI using Java Sphinx. So moving on. So now we'll be discussing something more about Sphinx. So Sphinx API is a set of extensible GUI components to ease developers life to create Java based front end GUI applications, it is built upon top of AWT API. AWT is basically abstract window toolkit. And this is also a API uh, that acts as a replacement of AWT API as it has almost every control corresponding to AWT controls. And uh, Swing component follows a model view controller architecture to fulfill fulfill the following criteria. Now we'll, we'll also be discussing what a model view controller architecture is. So first of all, a single API is to be sufficient to support multiple look and feel. So this single API is sufficient to support if we have multiple look and feel and API is to model driven so that highest level API is not required to have data and API is to use the Java bean model so that the builder tools and IDE can provide better services to the developers to use it. So it basically fall, uh, follows a Java bean model. And now we'll be discussing first of all, 
what is MVC architecture. So Swing API architecture fo follows loosely based MVC architecture in the following manner. First of all, we have three components as we discussed. First is model and V stands for view and C is controller. So a model represents components data and the view represents visual representation of the components data and the controller takes the input from the user on the view and reflects the changes on the components data and swing component have model as a separate element and view and controller are clubbed in the user interface elements and using this way swing has pluggable look and feel architecture. So I guess this might be a little difficult for you to understand. First of all, we'll be discussing what is MVC architecture. Here M stands for model. V stands for view. And C stands for controller. So I'll explain you a typical MVC model. Uh, View basically, view is your UI. Now earlier we discussed one example in which we saw a form which had various text boxes like first name and last name. So this is our view. And C is our controller. Controller basically acts as a mediator between <coughs> sorry model and view so basically what happens in a typical mvc model is we have a view we enter some data and controller when we'll enter this data and we'll hit submit or whatever button and this data will be fetched by a controller And in turn, it will just pass these values on to a model and model will do all the processing. And suppose uh, you have a typical login functionality in which you have a username and you have a password and you have login button. So you suppose you entered your username, you entered your password and you hit this login button and in turn, Whenever you will be hitting this login button, controller, these values will get to controller. So controller will store your username and your password and this will pass this username and password to a model. And model in turn will check from a DB typically. It will compare the input values and if username and password will be correct, it will pass the appropriate response to the controller and the controller will also show the appropriate UI page. And suppose if your username and password will be correct, then you will be uh, getting a login success UI. And if your username and password will be incorrect, you will be getting invalid login UI page. So this is basically a typical model and view and controller architecture. 